Well, I finally, today, I got in the mail earrings that I ordered. It must have been at least three months ago. They finally showed up. So I'm, I have to go back on eBay and find that person and pay them again and say, <laughs> you know, they refunded my money because they didn't show up and didn't show up and didn't show up. Well, months later, literally months, um, they, they showed up. Yeah, the postman delivered this little thing and I go, I didn't order anything. I haven't ordered anything that would come. Then I looked and I saw where it was coming from and I said, are you kidding me? So, let's see how these look. Oh yeah. Now this is one of my Tony Lama's my favorite thing. This one's just very simple upper boot. It's got that nice riding heel that I like on it. And yeah, these are the old ones. They got the pegs. I don't know if you could see here. Yeah, can't see too well, but it's got pegs here on both sides. And it's got the lizard toe with the lacing. Now, I love this style of boot. It's a uh, And you can see inside, very well made, leather, leather, this is, you know, all hand stitched. Yeah. They just recently changed the heel, heel cap on it, um, which is what I have to have done with the other boot because they wore them. They did. They wore them out. This one leans this way and the other one leans the other way. So like I said, they had to be bold. <laughs> bold <laughs> So now let me see. Make sure the fit is good. Should be perfect. I'm going to see whether I need to get a big heavier sock. Boot sock. Is that funny? Pamper! <laughs> I went to Joann's and I need a pair of socks for the boots and these were like 40% off because it's, uh, you know, Halloween. Nice. They kept them in these. That's that's really nice. Yeah, I like these. They're very simple. Very simple up here. Um, the other ones I got up up in this area. It's really really. It's a tall boot. This is not a tall boot. The other one I got is up to your knee, and it's a. Uh, reptile. I have to go to the boot thing today and get some stuff to uh, I'm a little afraid to put these on because uh, I don't have a boot jack here. <laughs> I don't have a boot jack. I think before I put these on I think I might have to wear a pair of jeans. I don't like to wear cow cowboy boots with dresses and stuff. Well, if it's a knee high, then it would be okay. These shorter ones, I don't like to wear them like with that. Uh, which one do I want to wear? I think I'll wear my shorter one. Anyway, I think I'm going to change. Do I dare try it on with this? I could try it on with this because I can always put on a, a skirt. I'll wear a long skirt. <laughs> yeah, okay, here we go. I'm going in. <laughs> Yep. Oh, yeah. 
perfect. Perfect. It's nice and, and you want it to fit nice and firm across here. You don't want any pinch in the toe and you want the heel to slip a little bit. That's a good boot. If, if your heel doesn't slip a little bit, you'll get blisters. Yeah, for those that have not worn Western boots before. Yeah, I want to go down to Mexico and have a pair made. That's what my dad did. He and he had the same boots, one pair of boots he wore his whole life. Now when he was out there playing music, when he started, I think it said he started like it was really young. I found a thing that did a research on him. And yeah, he started really young playing music. And uh, I think when he was recording, he was really, really young. I see some of the pictures of him with the original group, Smokey and Cliff and Leonard, Leonard Zinn, who is in the Hall of Fame. Uh, he is such a good slide guitar player. He's in the Hall of Fame, Leonard Zinn. This is who my dad played with. He was also Leonard Zinn was also a, uh, he was a photographer, underwater photographer for Jacques Cousteau. So he had an interesting life, that's all I can say. <laughs> interesting life. And then uh, Cliff, Cliff was the, he played the fiddle and uh, they got the, the name uh, 101 Ranch Boys, Ranch Gang from Cliff's mother. Cliff is a Cherokee, full, full Cherokee, and his mother lived on the 101 Ranch. And she was telling him, why don't you call it the, the 101 Ranch? Very famous ranch, biggest ranch in Oklahoma, 101 Ranch. So they did, they called them the 101 Ranch Boys. Okay. So yeah. Um, and their music is, they were one of the first Western groups to play swing music. They, they're, some of their stuff swings. <laughs> you should hear the recording. Those that haven't heard, those who've been on my channel in a long time have heard. Um, newer people maybe have not heard. Um, but yeah, they played very uh, rockin' music. <laughs> they were pretty funny, too. You know, when my dad got married to my mom, she said, no more. We're not doing that. <laughs> so when I was born, he quit. He quit the group, and then Andy Reynolds took over. So when it was the original group, it was my dad who was the leader. And then later years, after 50, um, Andy Reynolds became the group leader. Now, another thing that happened was they had a woman, Norma Jean was her name. I wish I could find something on her. I was fascinated by her when they would come to rehearse. You know, my life was filled up in either my dad's rehearsing and he and my mom uh, went out and continued to do music, okay? They did uh, some 
radio staff up in Wisconsin. They had a radio show. My dad had a radio show. And my mom had a beautiful voice, but she never said. It was just the guy group, the 101 Ranch Boys. He recorded for Security, Columbia. Um, I think there was one other label that they recorded for as well. Um, don't remember now what it was. But uh, anyway, Norma Jean would come over and she played lead guitar. She had fingernails out to here. She had these long red, red fingernails and her fingers would fly on there. I don't know how she did it. I don't know how she did it. She was so fast on that guitar. Norma Jean. Norma Jean. Oh my goodness. But I was fascinated by her. How can, how can she do that? <laughs> how can she play with those long fingernails? But she did. And she was quick. I remember them playing like the Sugarfoot Rag and stuff, and uh, you know, some of the really quicker songs, and she was so quick on it. And then I met people like Ernest Tubb and, you know, the old, the old country western singers, you know. Yeah. So anyway, here I am in my old age, back to the roots, I guess. <laughs> I wanted nothing to do with it when I was growing up. But, but, you know, sometimes I sang. I sang with my mom and my dad. We'd go out, and, you know, different places sing. And it so embarrassed me. When I was really young, I think how old I was, I, I was on the radio. I was singing K Sera on the radio, and then I went to school and it was so embarrassing. We heard you, you were there. And I'm like, oh God. Or my parents would come to play at the school and they'd call me up to come sit down. Don't do that. Don't embarrass me. Don't don't make me come up. <laughs> they would do things like that. But one thing that was cool that happened, I remember there was a, um, they would play for these blind children. They went to play something for these blind children, and the blind children would come up and and uh, and deaf. There were some deaf children. They would come up, and when my mom was playing bass, they would be touch the bass so they could feel the vibration of the music, which was kind of cool. That was kind of cool. They did that. Now, my mom learned to play stand up bass. My dad plays stand up bass, guitar and also piano. Okay. Um, he played, now there's one recording that I have up there that, that you did, where he's playing that slap bass. They call it walking bass, slap bass. He was good at that. He could just, you know, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I wish they had gotten a recording of my mother. I don't have any any physical recording of her because she had a beautiful voice. She'd sing the Old North Wind and Kalijah and all of those and uh, beautiful voice. It's Patsy Klein stuff. Mr. Fly, get away from there. <laughs> so that was interesting. And so now I'm doing music, but I do Native American flute, so a little different, a little different. I'll be so glad when COVID's over, I want to go and perform. You know, I'd be happy to go perform some places, but uh, with COVID, I just stop. So again, I want to get in the house. When I get in the house, I can do some more albums. At least I can do that. Um, so for those of those that like my music, the next album I'm going to do is going to be more Native American. 
with Native American drum, maybe, and uh, flute, and, uh, you know, that type of thing. The first album was very eclectic. Some of it sounds like Mideastern, Chinese, uh, some Native American on there. Um, yeah. A little variety. The first one was a variety. The other one is meditation. You know, it's strictly for meditation. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's that. I'm going to put on my other boot. You know, these are a perfect fit for me. The five, five and a half B. Five and a half B in the Tony Lama is just absolutely made for my foot. Um, you know, you got to find your right boot maker, too, because they, they all make them different, okay? But for me, the best is the Tony Lama, these, you know, these ones that are um, the vintage, the older ones where they were handmade. Now they make them in China, you know? They bought out, somebody bought, was it Justin? I think it's Justin that bought out Tony Lama. Okay. Never liked Justin boots. Van Post, sometimes they weren't too bad. I forget the other one I got. Maybe it's Old Gringo. That one I got, it's, it's nice. I bought it on my dad's birthday as a remembrance, um, that boot. Yeah. I go through phases. Sometimes I wear them and then I'll go out and not wear them for a while, but since I'm out here, I'll be wearing them more. Ooh, there we go. Oh, those are so comfortable. Yeah, no, those are perfect. So, <laughs> I'll be out there wandering around in my boots. They fit like a glove. When you've got a good boot and it fits right, you shouldn't have any pinching. When it goes up around your instep and your and uh, the top of your foot there, you should just kind of hug it. You should feel it in there just, just you know, like it's wrapped in a blanket or something. Um, so that's a good fit. That's a good fit. I've got to go now. I need to get some boot conditioner, and uh, I'm I'm so happy I found these online. I love these ones. Now I wish I could find like my boots I had. I wish I would have kept them. They were the blue one with the black lizard toe. Those were my favorite ones, and I've looked and looked and have not been able to find it. If I can find a vintage pair of those, they will be here, okay? <laughs> I keep, keep hoping I see a, a pair of the vintage with the blue. I'd wear those to death if I could find another pair. So far, I haven't found them. Maybe I'll check Etsy. Etsy could have them. Anyway, so I'm going to leave this here. Man, a lot of chit chat today. Anyway, all good. <laughs> Fly, would you quit <laughs> running across the camera? Anyway, uh, maybe soon I'll get out my other hat and show you what I did. I did a little bit more to that, to my blue hat. And, uh, yeah. During the summer, I like wearing my straw. I like this one. For the summertime, this one is nice. You know, it's lighter, you know, a little easier. And then the winter time, I'll go to my other one, to my blue one or the moss one that's being made, my really good one. Can't wait till that one's done. I can't get, I can't believe I'm getting all 
countryfied out here. <laughs> Yeah, if I'm not wearing my Native American regalia, then I'll be wearing more of this type of thing, you know. And uh, that works. Anyway, I'm going to leave this here now and find that boot maker, take those ones, drop them off, and get a boot jack. Get a boot jack and uh, some conditioner because the other ones I got there, a, uh, I think it's snake, it might be snake. They need to be conditioned. That snake skin is getting really uh, dried out from it because they haven't taken care of it, but I think I can get them back to okay. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, love and light to everyone. Please, again, as usual, always be safe out there. You know? You know? And if you get yourself a hat, you know, don't be afraid to, to what do they say, old time gussy it up. Okay? I put my feathers, put these feathers, put my arrows, put my little you know, edging around here, my little flower edging, and so, yeah, it's ready to go. Personalize it, make it your own. It's the other thing, I gotta go down, I gotta go down, I want to get the paints, because I'm gonna paint, you know, some of my hats. Yeah. <laughs> it's the next, next thing. It's but I want to find, uh, like I said, I want to do the ones like from the Petroglyphs. Or maybe I could do, I could also do something like this, my little. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do the Coco Pelly hat. Since I'm playing flute, maybe I'll do the Coco Pelly. Do that. Do that on the hat. That'd be kind of cool. Hmm. I might actually just do like this this part on my hat. The Coco Pellies. I think I may do that. So I gotta go down and get some paints. And uh yeah, Coco Pelly my hat up. <laughs> Love and light to everyone. Again, be safe out there. And, uh, oh, I'm so glad Bannon got nailed. Next is going to be, you know, the Tangerine Tyrant. And all his little cohort family, they're all going to be wearing orange. Maybe he can get adjoining cells to uh, Bannon. <laughs> oh, yes. See you online, love and light.